Welcome back to the shop once again. Today we're going to go over some more AC diagnostics for your Ford vehicle. Now the concern we're diagnosing today is where you turn the AC on, the button lights up, everything looks fine, but you're getting zero cooling out the vents. So then you go under the hood and you look at your AC compressor. It's spinning just fine pulley side, but your center clutch hub here is not engaging. The compressor is not turning on. Today we're going to go through three easy checks that you can do on your vehicle without ever getting your hands dirty and you're going to know exactly what the concern is. We're going to be able to narrow it down to a subsystem that is not allowing the compressor to come on. Now the first thing you need to realize is that the AC compressor is PCM controlled. So when you press the button to turn the AC on, you're simply requesting AC operation. The PCM is going to actually command it on and allow it to run. But first it needs to do, go, go through a series of pre-checks to make sure the engine is operating okay because it is such a load on the engine. It's going to make sure the system pressures are okay, evap temp is okay, and of course the ambient temperature is okay to make sure that the compressor is not going to slug. Okay, so it goes through a series of pre-checks and any one of those can disable the AC operation. The PCM simply will not allow it. Okay, let's go over to the vehicle and I'll show you just how fast and easy it can be to diagnose one of these on your Ford. Now the number one reason why the AC system will not come on is because the system pressures are simply too low. What you need to realize is that inside these lines right here is refrigerant and pag oil. And the refrigerant is needed to drag the pag oil through the system and lubricate the compressor. So when it's not coming on because the pressures are too low, it's be simply because the PCM is protecting the compressor from lockup. So the absolute first thing I do before I start busting out multimeters and everything else is get a basic manifold gauge set like this and connect it up just to the low side port on here, okay? And there's going to be a, a thicker tube like this, and there's going to be a smaller port on it, and then there's going to be a thinner tube like this you can kind of see. You'll see it on your vehicle. That's going to have a bigger port on it. That's the high side. You just want to tap into the low side on here, and we're going to wash the gauge, okay? Now this gauge should read some kind of pressure, 30, 40, 50 PSI. Obviously on a hot day, it'd be 80, 90 to 100 PSI. That's going to allow the AC clutch to actually come on. Now if there's lower refrigerant, it's going to cycle very fast as it drops and everything else, but it'll actually come on. Our concern we're diagnosing today is where it doesn't come on at all, no matter what. And as you can see on this one, there is no refrigerant in the system, so it's simply not going to compress refrigerant first off, and it's definitely not going to carry the oil through the system. So that's a darn good reason why the PCM is not allowing the compressor to come on. Now this is the most common and least invasive test we're going to do on an AC system like this for a no clutch engagement concern. I would say 90% of the time this is the concern. So it's a really quick easy check that you want to do first. Now let's say your AC charge level is okay, but your compressor clutch is still not turning on. The very next test we're going to do is even easier actually. What we're going to do is a key on, engine off, self test on the PCM with a scan tool. Now most cheap scan tools have this option, the IDS has it of course, and even the free 4Scan software has this option on it also. We'll do a key on, engine off, self test. And what that'll do is it'll test all the outputs that the PCM commands, fans, actuators, solenoids, and of course, you guessed it, the AC clutch right here. Now the nice thing about this is that it does a load test on the entire circuit coming down to the AC clutch and back. So it'll test the PCM driver, the circuitry, the relay, the inputs to the relay, and of course the magnetic clutch on the back side here, the disc clutch on the front side here, and then back on through the ground all at once while you sit here and watch. All right, here we go. Now, once the self-test is started, the fans will come on at the same time the clutch comes on. What I like to do is grab the clutch and try to spin it to make sure that the magnet has a strong grip on it, that there's no problems with the mating surface in the, between these two, the clutch and the pulley, and that it doesn't slip on there, okay? You should not be able to move it like this when it's engaged. So we'll go ahead and start that self-test now. 
and you'll see it and hear it suck this plate right here back. There it goes. It's still holding, it's holding, it's holding, it's holding. And it lets it go once the fans turn off. It's a very good test to do. It tests the integrity of the clutch itself and of course the electrical circuit all at once. Now you may have noticed the PCM still turned on the AC compressor even though our system has zero pressure in it. And the reason being is the PCM knows the engine's not running and therefore no damage can occur to the AC compressor. What it did not test is these AC pressure inputs like the low pressure cycling switch there and the high pressure cutoff switch right there. Now if your AC system pressures check out okay, it's 50 PSI or higher, and then the key on engine off clutch test also pass for you, the very next thing you want to do is come back to the scan tool and look at the live data stream for the PCM. These are the four PIDs right here that you want to bring up on your screen so you can watch them live as you change inputs and of course outputs once the vehicle started. The very first one you want to check is this one right here. Air conditioning clutch allowed. This will tell you if the PCM is even allowing the AC clutch to come on. It can turn it off for many, many reasons, not just system pressures. So you want to look at this one, make sure it says yes. The very next one here is the air conditioning clutch cycling switch. And that one will tell the PCM, hey, there's enough pressure in the system for proper, safe operation of the AC system. So that must say on. Now this next one right here is the high pressure switch. This one should be open at all times. If it's closed, the system pressure is too high. So you want that to say open and okay like that. The very next one here is the wide open throttle AC cutoff relay, which is on some older Ford vehicles, it's separate. Whereas this one, they're combined with the air conditioning clutch relay. So they're all the same unit on there since it is PCM controlled. You want this one to say on and that'll tell you when the PCM is commanding the AC clutch on through the relay. Now with the key on engine off, we're gonna turn the AC on max, okay? And you can see the difference here. So yes, the AC is system is allowed. Thank you, Mr. PCM. The AC clutch cycling switch saying, yes, there's plenty of pressure, go for it. This next one, the high pressure one saying, it's okay as before. And then of course, this last one, it's not turning on the AC clutch relay because the engine's not started. Now, once the vehicle started, after it idles and it, it stabilizes, it'll turn on the AC clutch. And you can see it changed to on right here. And of course, you'll be able to hear it under the hood very loud, the AC clutch coming on. Now, between the three tests I just had you do, and the information up on the screen here, the live data stream from the PCM, you should be able to tell which system or sensor is not allowing the AC clutch to actually come on and the AC system to operate. So let's go through a few quick scenarios on here, depending on what you may see reading on the boxes here. Now the first one, let's say it says no, on, closed, off. At that point, you know the high pressure switch, the circuitry, or the high pressure, there's too much high pressure in the system that's not allowing the AC system to operate. Okay? Now, if it says no, off, okay, off, then you know the low pressure cycling switch is what's not allowing the system to actually come on. Okay, here's a few more PIDs you want to select on the newer Ford vehicles. You want to go into the um, PCM or the climate control module, depending on if um, the vehicle in the model year. On this vehicle, it's inside the climate control module. And you want to look at the evaporator temperature. There's a little sensor on there. Like I said, they get you know moisture from the evap, and of course they'll corrode over time, and then they'll throw like they'll show like negative 20, negative 10, or zero when obviously we know it's 70, 80 degrees outside. So you want to check that, make sure it's reading close to ambient. And then the same thing, the external temp sensor, um, the sun load and all that stuff is not a big input to the climate control 
um, but it is an input and it does tell it uh, the conditions the vehicle is operating in. Now the other one that's even more important is over in the PCM. On the newer vehicles you can check a few more things without ever going under the hood too. And these are all generic uh, PIDs so you should be able to select them on your scan tool if it's a halfway decent scan tool. So we'll clear those. We're going to look at the AC pressure and that's the low side pressure. It just has a reading now and then the PCM commands it on and off. And our command and request mode, sure. And that's about it. On this one right here. So we'll go ahead and look at those. Okay, so our AC request, they call it on the newer vehicles. And that's the same thing is the AC button on. So we'll press it on and it responds. So the PCM knows it's getting the request from the climate control module to turn the AC on. Okay, and then read this right here, this AC pressure. This is an actual pressure transducer built right into the system there in a line and it'll tell it the pressure so you can tell if it's reading, you know, uh, correctly or not. If it's, again, showing, you know, 20 PSI, whereas your manual gauges say 90, uh, then you know you got a problem in that area. So you can get a lot of information just on what the actual PCM is seeing here. Now on this one, in the scan tool, we can actually turn on and off the clutch. On and off. And that's a good tool too to make sure it's turning on uh, based on scan tool input. So as you can see, there's a lot of great information just by looking at some live data streams from the PCM. Not too bad, right? It only takes about five minutes, and I bet your hands didn't even get dirty. At this point, you should know which subsystem is not allowing the AC compressor to turn on and cool down your vehicle. And you could just zero in on that subsystem and do detailed diagnostics. Now, the reason why I don't get into detailed diagnostics in these videos is because each model and year is different depending on their setup on there. But at least at this point, you know if it's the, the electrical side, the AC clutch relay, if it's a refrigerant problem, which like I said, 90% of the time is refrigerant, or hey, the EVAP temp, temp uh, is way off. It's like negative 20 when it's 90 degree, degrees out. You know exactly where to head next. Now, if you like this video, be sure to hit like down below. And if you want to see more, make sure you subscribe because there's always great new content coming on the channel. Not to mention a library of almost 600 repair videos showing you how to fix your Ford yourself. I'll see you next time.